So this is going to be about 5x speed, so bear with me. Um, is your data secure? The answer is no for most people. We, our solution is Pegos, which is built on top of IPFS. I don't need to convince you guys why decentralization and security are important. These are the three things I want, security, control, and convenience. Let's start with control. So self-hostable, selectively sharing files, hiding contacts. This is our sort of logical architecture. Um, basically, all the data is in IPFS. Um, we use IPNS, kind of. Um, this, the structure is you have a, it's a, it's a globally a global encrypted file system. Your space is under your username in the global namespace. We have a each person has a tree of symmetric keys which controls access to files. Uh, that's called crypt tree. There's a paper you can read. So you end up with a location plus a key is your cryptographic cap capability. This is what crypt tree looks like. Uh, so there's a bunch of each of the boxes is a key. So the first column is a directory, then the subdirectory, and then there's a file. Um, so if I grant the file's parent key to someone, then they can read both the properties and the contents of that file. And the parent keys go backwards. That just means everything has a well-defined global path. Um, but if I had done what I just said, and there was another file in the same directory, that person wouldn't be able to tell anything about that. Um, so it's very fine-grained access control. This is what we do. We chunk files, 5 meg, encrypt split it into fragments, possibly erasure coding, dump them in IPFS, and then create uh, the, the cryptree node, which has Merkle links to each of those fragments. Everything we do is already in IPLD. Uh, there's too much on that slide to talk about. The file system itself is in a data structure called a CHAMP, uh, which is a compressed hash array map to try. This has lots of wonderful properties. Uh, and if we decide to move to a CRDT in the future, that will make that easier. Um, the main thing we get in this situation is the directory structure and indeed the links between different parts of the same file are not visible to the network. Um, all they see is a big map of 5 meg chunks or not 5 meg if it's a directory. So it kind of looks like that. You have champ nodes. Uh, which eventually point to, these are all Merkle links, all in IPLD, and eventually to the encrypted file fragments. Write access is controlled with, a, as you would expect, with a key pair. Sharing, um, basically, we send uh, a capability between users to a, a, very, a, a part in their file system, and they then use that to basically bootstrap to get other capabilities through. Um, so that currently happens through, it has to happen through asymmetric crypto. That's the only thing in our system that's currently vulnerable to a quantum computer, if one is ever built, uh, that's big enough. Um, but we, we are looking into migrating away from that. And the most important thing, finally, is convenience. Like, it should be e easy to use for a typical Facebook user. So there are no hashes, there are no visible keys, there are no anything like that. Um, and the first thing that people want is to be able to log in from any machine. Um, so the way we do that is we take your password, we salt it with your username uh, through, and run it through script, which is a memory hard hashing function. We tune it to take about a second on a, on a mobile phone or a PC. And you know, that, those end up with your, your two key pairs and a root symmetric key. These are only ever stored in RAM, never written or to disk or transmitted. Uh, we can do public links, basically just encoding the capability in the URL, which I demoed earlier. I also demoed the media plays. You saw that I didn't mention. Uh, we also want to have basically applications within Piergos, which you grant specific capabilities. But we, you want to obviously sandbox them so they can't escape from that, especially in the browser. Uh, we have a prototype uh, which basically cross-compiles a browser plus Wine plus an x86 emulator to JavaScript through EMScript. And, um, <laughs> it's not fast, but yeah. Um, so security, the thing we fundamentally care about. Uh, can a login be cracked? You do the maths, TLDR, random 14-character password, no. 
uh, unless you have 300 billion US dollars in a thousand years. Um, that's the graph of how much it would cost to crack a password uh, in, a, in, a, in a year. Um, you can see there's a red line there as well. Uh, how am I doing for time? Okay. Um, so, okay, we'll, we'll quickly go back. So then, basically, don't use an 11-character password or even a 12-character one. For, uh, 14 is good, and yes, it should be random. Um, what about quantum computer-based attacks? As I mentioned earlier, you have that crypt thing, which is the, the links between keys are the target key symmetrically encrypted with the source key. Um, so that's how you traverse that tree. Um, and the thing I just explained, the login, that's just hashing. Both, both of those have no known quantum attacks, not significant ones anyway. You get like a factor of two. Um, so basically all your files, anything that's not shared, is already safe from a quantum computer. Um, the one thing, obviously, you're, we're still, we're, you're still signing rights. Um, and that, that also, basically all asymmetric crypto, all standard asymmetric crypto is broken by a quantum computer. So they could delete your data, but they couldn't read it. Um, and then the final attack is normally but JavaScript crypto is insecure. And yeah, it depends on your threat model. If you're a casual user, you're willing to trust someone's public server, trust the SSL certificate hierarchy, and of course your machine, um, then then you're, you can just use the, the web interface as you would Facebook. Um, a more paranoid user can do various things and basically compile and run it on their own machine. Um, one thing I glossed over in an earlier slide is we, we try to explicitly avoid any dependence on DNS or the SSL certificate authorities, um, which is easy with IP, well, much easier with IPFS. Thank, thank you. Uh, build security. So we have reproducible builds both on the server and the front end. We don't use NPM. We only have eight JavaScript dependencies. All of them are vended. Three of them are crypto libraries. We have our own deterministic replacement for Webpack and minifiers. We self-host all of our assets, so there's no cross-domain request to whatever CDNs. Uh, oh, and most of the client code is also written in a type-safe language and cross-compiled to JavaScript. Uh, ah. We got there. Uh, I did the demo earlier, so that's. I don't think we have time for questions, but yeah. If you well, we have a demo online. You can try out. There's a, a book that goes into a booklet that goes into more detail. Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Any any questions? Yep. Hello. Yeah. Um, how paranoid are you when building this? Quite, but as it's still in development, not as as much as we will be. Is there any part of the system you feel is potentially like not paranoid enough? Well, I mean, so initially we'll be doing releases through through Pigos itself, but it would be nice to use some kind of multi-sig thing, for example, so that one of us is being compromised, wouldn't compromise the whole thing. Um, things like that would be nice. Another question. Um, the deterministic builders, uh, that's really cool, uh, especially with an eye towards making sure that there's no random stuff going in there. Uh, a lot of those projects import just so much stuff that is uh, for security applications would be pretty terrifying. Um, are all those modules that people can find and yeah, yeah, um, the, most of them are on, on GitHub. Um, Sweet. Well, so the, the minifier itself, we didn't write that. That's that's another thing, but it's yeah. Yep. Very cool. Other questions? And I think you can you can one other thing that. Uh, you do is you can give people public links, so you can have a public link that requires no login to be able to view a specific, um, a specific file or a specific directory. So um, to, to, I can just do a quick demo of that. So here's a public link. So that's what it looks like. There's a bunch of stuff after the hash. 
you browse to that. It does its thing, and that's the directory we can see. Uh, so if we go back to the actual logged in user, uh, that's the directory there. So you can see there's a bunch of sibling stuff to it. If we try and go up a directory, we don't see any of that. Um, and we can go into these guys and see. So you, it's a public link to an entire subtree. Um, What do you need help with from the community? Good question. Um, a UI developer would be awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, yeah, we're not UI developers, so it's not as pretty as it could be. Um, <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Anything else? Uh, Security audit. Um, we've got a quote from QF53, but it's yeah, 20 grand. Um, yeah. uh, what else in terms of actual individuals? Um, just try it out, give us feedback. And Sebastian, uh, code documentation. Yeah. Another thing we've discussed is that we need an API for transactional data rights to IPFS so that things don't get pinned in intermediately. But that's about it. And uh, if uh, we were to, so right now you have a server that has to run. Uh, and we were talking before about what it would take to get that to be like as close as possible to just a web app that yeah. can be loaded somewhere so you don't have to even depend on a server, what, what does that story look like? So basically, in terms of uh, the actual API usage, uh, so there's of IPFS, we just use block, put, and get, uh, pin, add, and update. We, if we're calculating size, we use block stat. Um, uh, we have our equivalent to IPNS, um, which is just two calls. There's the call to send a follow request, um, which we're going to That'll be easy to replace with peer to peer stream. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, and the, the PKI calls, but they, those are all the, our PKI data is now also in IPFS itself. Um, still signed centrally, it's because we need to ensure uniqueness of usernames. But, um, and the idea is that that PKI will be mirrored on every node so they can do local queries without leaking whose keys they're looking up. Um, That's great. Thank you very much.